Hello everyone, good day to all of you, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss on the high strain dynamic test. As we all know that none of the integrity methods gives any information on the bearing capacity of the pile. So in order to evaluate bearing capacity, we have to conduct load test. The conventional way of conducting load test is to put a cantilage on top of pile and physically load the pile and evaluate the low settlement curve and interpret for the capacity. So what we do in the high strain dynamic test is an indirect way of instrumenting the pile, dropping a dead weight, acquiring the data and then processing the data and computing the pile capacity. Hi, I am Partha Sarathi, Founder and Managing Director of Sarathi Geotech and Engineering Services Private Limited. We are technical partners of Pile Dynamics Inc. USA and represent them in this part of the world to conduct training programs and provide tech support. So I will give you step by step procedure of conducting high strain dynamic test to evaluate bearing capacity of deep foundation. The high strain dynamic test involves instrumenting the pile top with strain gauge and accelerometer. So what does the strain gauge and accelerometers do? The strain gauge will measure the strain in the member during an impact. You know the modulus of the material. You also know the cross-sectional area. Knowing the modulus and cross-sectional area and the measured strain, you can evaluate the force on pile top. The accelerometers will measure the motion of the pile. Integrating this acceleration will give you velocity. The force and velocity are proportional with a constant impedance or Z, which is defined as Ea divided by the wave speed, the modulus, and the cross sectional area divided by the wave speed. The test consists of instrumenting the pile top with strain gauge and accelerometer and dropping the pile top with a dead weight, which is about 1 to 2 percent of the ultimate pile capacity to be proved. 1% for rock socketed pile, 2% for the friction pile. So when you drop the dead weight on top of the pile, force velocity time history is captured on pile driving analyzer. So in order to evaluate the quality of the data, you should ensure that the data starts from the zero and data returns to the zero. There will be a proportionality between force and velocity which is on top of each other at the first peak. The data you see in the screen has an excellent proportionality starting from zero, ending at zero and therefore this data is qualified to be a good data. What are the information that is required to be collected prior to conducting the test? The geometry of the pile that is your diameter and the length, the grade of concrete and the volume of the concrete, the steel reinforcement used in the foundation, example the grade, diameter and the number of bars. So this will help you to limit the stresses during the test and terminate the test if the stresses exceeds the allowable limits. The geotechnical or soil bore log information is very critical. The load to be proved and thus you can choose the dead weight that has to be dropped on the top of pile. The pile length available for the test area with respect to the ground level. So you need to prepare the test section. Either you grow the pile above the ground or you excavate around the pile and prepare the test section. The test section shall be at least around 2 to 2 and a half times the diameter of the pile because you are mounting the sensor somewhere between 1.5 to 2 times the diameter below the pile top. You cannot mount the sensors shallower than one time the diameter of the pile top, one time the diameter of the pile because there will be a stress concentration. As deep as possible is fine, but in order to fix at a greater length, you need to prepare a longer test section. So in idealized case, about two times the diameter of the pile is necessary and it's, it's sufficient. So preparing the pile top is very, very critical and it's very important to collect good quality data. So all the loose concrete has to be demolished, has to be removed, contaminated concrete has to be removed and you have to reach a sound concrete. From that level, you prepare the rebars until the top of the test section and you put a mesh at the top and pour concrete, vibrate nicely. Perhaps the test sections could be one grade higher than the actual concrete because we do not want any breakage of the test section during the test, which otherwise will the test will be incomplete and of course there will be 
much delay in your project schedule. So once you have prepared a beautiful test section, you are rest assured to collect high quality data. As you see on the screen, the test section is perfect and the data quality on the right side is also perfect. You see the proportionality at the first peak between force and velocity. The data is starting from zero. It is returning to zero. If you look at your individual strain and velocity, all those data will be perfectly all right. All good pile tops will give you good quality data. But look at this, a shabby pile top with unprepared pile surface. It's not level. There's no grinding. Instrumentation is done on a very shabby pile top. So this kind of pile top will give you no data and you are compelled to manipulate the results if you are not acquiring good quality data. So friends, it is very, very important to pay attention for the simple task of preparing the pile top section and instrumenting the pile with sensors so you can acquire good quality data. If you acquire good quality data, the results and the interpretations becomes extremely easy. If you do not have good quality data, then your interpretation will be extremely complicated and sometimes the results will be inconclusive. Another important aspect in board pile testing, normally we mount a pair of strain gauge and pair of axrometers. When you are testing large diameter drill shaft, in order to compensate by axial bending, it's always recommended to mount four strain gauges and two axrometers and collect good quality data. That is your force velocity time history. So what is the next step? In order to compute capacity, always it is recommended to carry out a CAPFAP analysis. So CAPFAP is a signal matching software, which is gold standard, which is known, also known as case pile wave analysis program. The CAPFAP software will import the signature from the pile driving analyzer, and then it will try to analyze for its capacity by varying the soil resistance distribution and the dynamic soil constants. As you're seeing on the screen, the first try is very poor. Then you make some adjustments, then the trial becomes better. Continue with some adjustment with change in the damping, the quakes, the unloading parameters. And finally, in the top, both your computed and the measured signatures are on top of each other. That is how, that is where you have arrived at a solution. The output of the CAPFAP software is as shown in the screen. The right side top curve is the raw data from the pile driving analyzer, which is your force velocity time history. The left side is your computed and measured signatures. Essentially, both of them are top of each other. And that is how it should be to arrive at a solution. The bottom right is the unit skin friction distributions along the length of the pile. On the left side bottom is your equivalent static load distribution curve. The numerical value there shown is the total capacity of the pile, the skin friction distribution and the end bearing component. So this is the output from the CAPAP analysis and this confirms the bearing capacity of the pile. There's some snapshot of the bad data. There could be some instances where you have the enlarged diameter just below the test sections or just below the gauges. If you have the enlarged bulge just before the sensor location, your force and velocity are out of proportional. So it's always preferable to avoid mounting your sensors just at above the uh, change in the cross section. Another set of data, you could see the force, velocity, proportionality. For a good quality data, it should be unity. What you see on the screen is around 2.2. This is a very, very shabby data. You cannot process this data. You have to go and collect the data again. But if you tend to process this data, then you get very shabby results. Okay, the solutions may not be making any geotechnical sense. For example, you could see the impedance profile that may not be the actual profile that exists on the ground, but the analysis yields a solution which may not be appropriate and make geotechnical sense. So friends, the following are the very important tasks. Pile top preparation, calibrations of your sensors and equipment, mounting your sensors below the pile top, choosing an appropriate dead weight to be dropped on the pile, 
I'm getting a good quality force velocity time history. Importing the force velocity time history into a CapWeb software, analyzing for a CapWeb solution. The output of the CapWeb results will give you the bearing capacity of the pile, the distribution of the capacity between the skin and the end bearing. I hope this was useful. Stay tuned for many more updates on technical information and I will see you on my next video. Until then, happy learning. Thank you.